everyone. I realize that um, question 21 in your chapter 8 homework is kind of a long and in-depth problem and it has multiple parts to it. So I kind of want to review with everyone the different types of parts and how we would calculate that using Excel to help you walk through that. This information that I have up here is actually information given for problem 22 in your textbook, chapter 8, problem 22. So if you, my recommendation in this blue box is to go ahead and stop this video and type that into your own spreadsheet so you can follow along with me. The first step here is that they're asking us to calculate the expected return of each asset. That's quite easy to do. All we have to do is take the probability and multiply it by each asset. You can see here the expected payoff is equal to the sum, which we'll add them all together, of the payoff, which we've got here, expected return, times the probability. So let's go ahead and do that. We can do one formula here, and then we can copy it across to all of them. So again, I said it was probability times the expected return. Now we can lock this probability onto the B column so that when I move to column D, it stays on B. And the easiest way to do that is just put a dollar sign in front of the B. So, and then we'll hit enter. Take that, we can copy it across now just by dragging from the bottom of that cell and we can drag it down. Then um, to get the expected return of each asset, we just sum those. So we will use this nice little auto sum feature in Excel. Let it do the work for us. We'll copy that over. And there's your answer. So the return on asset A is, looks like 4% here, 0 0.04. 9.28% for asset S and 0.1% or 10.13% for asset T. Okay, so this row right here is just the sum of those. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this information right now to give us a little bit more room. Okay, so the next problem that we're asked to work on is the variances and standard deviations. So what we need to do here, again, it says the payoff minus the expected payoff. So this is our payoff the expected payoff is what we just calculated, the expected return for each of those assets times the probability. So again, we can put in one formula. We may need to uh, put it in a couple of different parentheses here to make sure it all gets calculated correctly. So we'll click on the return, which would be the payoff, minus the expected return, which we just calculated in part A for asset R then we need to go ahead and take that to the second power so we'll shift a 6 and make a 2 and then I want to go ahead and make sure all that calculates before it multiplies by the probability which is here so again we still need to lock that column and the other thing we want to lock is this row here for the expected return so we'll put a dollar sign in front of that Zero is okay there, and I'll explain to you why here in just a second. We'll copy that over. 0.04, 4% is going to be zero. Zero squared is zero. <laughs> Times the probability will be zero. Then we'll calculate the variance here. We just need to sum those together. And that gives you your variance for each asset which is just the sum of all that. And then the standard deviation here is the square root of the variance. So this is a new calculation for you. If you come up to formulas, click on math, come down to square root, S-Q-R-T. Then we just highlight that variance and it'll calculate the square root for us. And drag that over. Okay, and there's the answer, the standard deviation for those assets. So that's the first two parts of the program. I'm going to do another video to handle the second two. Thank you.